Nitrogen is a very important fertilizer for cannabis plants, but can be a little confusing. Here in Tobacco University, hope to, through this video, clarify some of the confusion and get you to understand about some of the options that exist. All right, let's look at nitrogen fertilizer options for cannabis production. So first off, the effects of nitrogen fertilizer rate and timing. So nitrogen can be found in either organic or inorganic forms in the soil. Organic forms of nitrogen are found when the plant and animal material decomposes and releases proteins and amino acids back into the soil as part of the nitrogen cycle. When organic materials are broken down by bacteria, they form inorganic nitrogen as ammonia. This is a process called ammonification. Inorganic nitrogen includes nitrates, ammonium, and uh, denitrogen gas as well. European research had indicated in hemp cultivars do not need as much nitrogen compared to wheat. So it's a nice little comparison there. If you look at wheat research, you may be able to f use that as a theoretical maximum here if you're be going to be growing cannabis. So research from Canada, hemp response to nitrogen fertilizer. So research in Canada demonstrated that hemp responded to nitrogen up to about 120 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, which equates to about 110 pounds of nitrogen per acre. When soils were deficient by increasing speed and biomass yield. And again, research stated here. Research in Saskatchewan showed that a positive response to fertilizer with nitrogen rates up to 150 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare or 130 pounds of nitrogen per acre being optimal. So you can see that there is a little bit of kind of uh, walking of those numbers, a little bit of a variability in those numbers. In Quebec, they found uh, 100, 180 pounds uh, to the acre or 200 kilograms of nitrogen showed positive response with no plateau observed. So again, something to take into consideration. So what's the general summary of all of this? Nitrogen rates of 120 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare or 110 pounds of nitrogen per acre to 200 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare or 180 pounds of nitrogen per acre should be the target range. Ideal target should be around 150 kilograms per hectare or 130 pounds of nitrogen per acre. This gives you a good starting point so you're not over fertilizing but also not starving your plants for nitrogen. Now why is nitrogen so difficult? Well nitrogen is so difficult because it does a lot of changes. It goes through a lot of kind of transformations uh, if you will. So all major soil uh, nitrogen transformations are mediated by various soil microorganisms. Also, the fate of any fertilizer and nitrogen source is subject to the following. We want to consider mineralization. This is conversion of organic nitrogen to inorganic nitrogen by microorganisms. The mineralization effect here, we can see that portion right here in this kind of diagram trying to demonstrate this visually. Nitrification is the conversion of ammonium to nitrogen into nitrate. So we have that nitrification phase uh, that can also be occurring. Then we also have denitrification, which is the conversion of nitrate into nitrogen gas. In this case, it becomes lost to the atmosphere. So here's an example of denitrification, bringing of nitrogen gas and being kind of lost out to the atmosphere. Same thing, we have uh, volatilization of ammonia, loss of ammonia nitrogen as a gas as well. This volatilization that does occur. Leaching, which is caused by over irrigation, especially in sandy soils, causing that water to be leached out through. Immobilization is where we have the conversion of inorganic nitrogen to organic forms, typically then uptake by plants and microbes, and ammonium fixation on certain types of clay soils. So you can see here that there's a lot going on. Here's our fertilizer inputs, here's our potential leaching the groundwater, our nitrifications, our mineralization, our denitrification. There's a lot going on with nitrogen. So nitrogen conversions impact at the root zone uh, pH. So plants uptake ammonium and other positively charged cations by releasing one hydrogen ion, H+, into the medium solution for each ammonium ion to be absorbed. So it's kind of this release and uptake that's occurring. Now over time, the ammonial uh, nitrogen uptake increases hydrogen ion concentration, thereby lowering the growing medium pH. Keep in mind, pH is the measure of the hydrogen ion concentrations, and as your hydrogen ions increase in number, your pH becomes lower. So a pH of two has a really high amount of hydrogen ions, and a pH of eight has a much lower amount of hydrogen ions. The uptake of neg negatively charged anions, such as nitrate, is most often accomplished by releasing hydroxide ions, or OH. 
in this growing medium solution. Hydroxide and hydrogen ions combine to form water. So if you look at these independently, they look positive negative. Well, H2O is two hydrogens and one oxygen, and it'd be a neutral charge. Over time, the reaction of hydroxide and hydrogen ions decreases hydrogen ion concentration and increases the medium pH. So again, just an important consideration to be making that right near the root zone, your pH is going to be fluctuating, which could affect nutrient uptake. So impact on different percent of ammonium on the root zone pH. Well, rose plants were shown grown in hydroponically in a nutrient solution containing different percentages of ammonium. Here's a days after fertilization, and here's the pH. The effects are much more dramatic uh, than what would occur in a commercial growing medium, as it's somewhat buffered due to the chemical properties added by limestone. This was shown in, um, in a purely hydroponic situation. And we could see that as the percentage increase of nitrogen in the form of ammonium, we see a, a steep drop in pH, and sometimes it stays down there, and sometimes it does bounce back. So there's a certain kind of theoretical um, threshold amount that's going to maintain that very acidic environment. So organic matter and nitrogen. Well, soil organic matter will mineralize about 20 to 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year. 95% or more of the total nitrogen in surface soils is present as organic nitrogen, so keep that in mind. Under normal growing conditions, when soils are warm, moist, and well aerated, ammonial nitrogen, ammonium plus uh, ammonia, converts to nitrate in about two to three weeks, making the nitrate in the most abundant inorganic form of nitrogen. So we're seeing this kind of transition between mineralization, immobilization, and this kind of circle that goes around. But then we also have this nitrification where we're having that conversion here um, that is also occurring. So again, soil organic matter, great thing to have, but it is a key component within this nitrogen cycle that's occurring in the soils. Now there's two forms of our nitrogen. There's chemical nitrogen fertilizer options, and there's also going to be organic forms, which I'll talk about next. But your chemical nitrogen forms, the advantage of these in general, are quickly available to the plant, and they contain known and defined amounts of nitrogen. That makes applications of these very easy and precise. The disadvantage is they can have short residual times requiring repeated applications. If you're wondering what um, fertilizer would qualify as this category, urea, ammonium, nit uh, ammonium nitrate, and calcium nitrate are examples of chemical nitrogen fertilizer options that would fall into these advantages as well as these disadvantages. However, if you're considering organic forms, why would someone consider organic forms? Well, they're often a free source of nitrogen. That's why a lot of growers consider using them. The material can also have other soil property benefits. However, the disadvantage of using organic fertilizer for nitrogen is it can come with other nutrients that may not be needed. So if you're fertilizing or only need nitrogen and you're adding these nutrients that contain other forms, you could reach above optimum or potentially toxic levels uh, of other nutrients. Now, pure organic nitrogen fertilized options would be uh, blood meal. Uh, however, fish and manure, while they contain high amounts of nitrogen, they also contain other nutrients as well. So be mindful if you're adding these for nitrogen, you're also going to be adding a lot of phosphorus and potassium as well. So the organic versus synthetic fertilizers, well here's our organic, we're feeding the soil. Synthetics are feeding the plants, more of a direct line to the plants. Organics do have a couple intermediate steps. However, what, what I want you to realize is no matter what fertilizer fertilizer option you choose. They're both ideally being uptake by the plant. They do require maybe a little different timing, a little bit more expertise by the grower to kind of dial both of these in. But in the end result, ideally to the plant, the nitrogen should be the same. So again, don't favor one or the other. Uh, just because you want to be you know, organic, you think that's 100% better and better for the plants. Synthetics may have their place, particularly early on, when these soil microorganisms might be a little slower to get going in the early part of the season, when your plants might be showing nitrogen deficiency. So be aware of both options and utilize both when they best fit your growing situation.